Hello, Dragon Ball players and fans. We are back again. Round three. It is time. This time around, we are getting Joshua Burchett playing Clash Coot. Let's get it, baby. I was so excited that he was playing this. Versus Daylon Mack, MFL player. He's got a tournament going on in the coming uh, weeks, in the coming months. But uh, they're die rolling for game, and they're starting it out already. So this is going to be exciting. He's playing uh, Beerus, one of my favorite leaders uh, from this past set. I think he just um, he's just very good all around, especially on his unawakened side. He starts uh, clearing the board and stuff, which I think is going to be pretty useful in this matchup. But uh, we'll see. Like, uh, There's just going to be a question of being able to get him down before he plays that Kaioken Goku because... There's no, there's no secrets with Clash Crew. You know exactly what's happening at all times because, uh, you know, there's one goal, one goal alone, is to get to that uh, seven drop, um, seven drop Kaioken Goku. Go to one life, look at your opponent's hand four times, and just kill him. That's the, that's the game plan at least. Whether or not he'll be able to do it, we'll find out. Hopefully, it goes to maybe three games. That way, we get to showcase both. Uh, both decks is power, both the power of both decks, sorry. And uh and yeah. Right now it's it's pretty good. I wonder I'm hoping the classical player might even have like some sort of a uh some sort of tech or something. That's something neat because I've seen the the, the, the classic like clash is very easy to outplay, you just don't have to play battle cards because uh because they they get hit by um what's it, what's that card called? Uh oh, what is it what is it called? Man, the Vegeta. The Vegeta who warps, I can't remember the name for the life of me for some reason. But yeah, the um, the Vegeta who, the counterplay Vegeta, warps a card and destroys the creature being played. So that's the whole uh, idea behind Clash Crew. He spams out the board with those guys. Vegeta the Cruel, I had to see it when he milled it off the top of his deck there to, to be able to remember. He plays the Vegeta the Cruels, he plays the Arrival um, Gogeta, and he just gets to like just spam hard. So here he's going to burst two. So now he's three out of uh, 20 on his way to that Kaioken Goku. Um, Clash Crew players can get there no problem. Having getting to mill two and then discard one, it could potentially put three uh, targets in your in your drop area. And I'm pretty sure you don't play anything that isn't. Uh, oh, maybe you don't play anything that isn't um, green, uh, red. So either way, any any target you hit is going to be is going to count towards the uh, the Kaioken Goku because that card is not just battle cards. Even extra cards count towards the uh, the permanent where he he becomes. Um, Two less, I believe, to go from a seven cost to a five cost, so it's pretty good. Pretty good. We're gonna see. I, I expect, I fully expect the Clash Crew player to just swing with his leader, mill two, discard one, draw two, and then uh, pass with two, two, ma uh, two energy open. Oh, that's an unfortunate uh, mill there. It's the equivalent of milling two super combos, I suppose, because it, th those are like his pseudo super combos, where it's like instead of ten k they get five, but he still draws. So they're pretty insane, but. It's just unfortunate that he hit, he hit those off the mill. <laughs> Next one, one, and two, and three, baby. Alrighty. Beerus discarded. That's interesting. Typically, they want to hold on to their Beeruses. Not a target for Vegeta the Cruel Beerus because he has. Uh, or he's over a four drop. He's on a plus five. And the Krillin goes to drop area. He could be teching in the spice of uh, the set one spice, the Goku. Uh, if there's a Krillin in your drop area, you get to nuke your opponent's board. And he's like a double striker. But that card's very underwhelming compared to the stuff you could bring out otherwise. So it's going to be a whole lot of nothing, I believe. The Clash Coup player is going to draw two. Beerus player is going to draw two. And they're just going to soak with their leaders. It's going to be that kind of party. Granted, if uh, if uh, Daylon can put a little bit of pressure on, and make it so that the Kaioken doesn't get as much value off of the whole uh, negging it, it'd be pretty big. Also, he could just hold the Champa, and that would turn off the that, that that turn as well. I think that's the correct line of play, actually. If uh, Beerus manages to find just the, the Champa, he just sits on it, waits, 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 lets him play his five drop, and then Champas it and proceeds to kill him in the next turn. That's the move. He's down to five life now, Daylon is. So it's five life for uh, Beerus, Daylon, and uh, six life for Joshua. Uh, yeah, Daylon's at five life. And, 
and uh, Josh was at six. Yep. So here's the reversal, baby. Nukes the Krillin, plus five k to his leader. This card is too good, and now he has a nineteen uh, k threat on board. So this card, this draft box card, is a nightmare for um, wide decks that go wide, just because it nukes the entire board twenty k. Um, ideally, it would have been good if uh, it was smart of uh, Joshua to attack with his leader before playing anything, because uh, if he wouldn't have, then the Beerus leader would have gone up 5k, and he wouldn't have been able to uh, land a hit on with his leader. But now he plays this uh, two-drop Beerus for free. Just plays him out for free. And he takes a hit. And passes turn. So this is scary, because Beerus is in the awaken range. I'm not too sure if Beerus wants to awaken just yet, because that turns off his drawing. But it also allows him to start comboing from his drop area. Which, because uh, Daylon discarded a Beerus, he has a multicolor card in his drop area, which is the beginning of the end, I think. So he's going to pop. Nope, he's going to play that. He, ne he minus the 5k with the Whis to the Beerus, and then he got to play the uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku for free. No combos, and he takes the one. Big movements, and now he's going to swing 15 onto 10. The Beerus being 10, because he got minus 5k by the Whis, and it's not worth protecting. Another card in the drop area for the uh, for the 7 drop, though. And he's going to swing to 19, unafraid to awaken him. Granted, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more happening this turn besides just... Um, oh, there's a power burst. That's pretty good. Is he going to choose to KO? Is that thing a 2-drop? No, it's not a 2-drop. 3-drop, I believe. And he just passes. He doesn't do anything. So it looks like uh, Daylon wants to add more cards into his hand with his Beerus effect. Gr I mean, it is it is it is understandable considering Beerus stops drawing. Although, whoa, is that a Broly? He's playing green. Oh, he's playing green in this deck. So this is a spicy. Oh, he's, oh my God! I saw the uh, Vegeta the Cruel in his hand as well. He's playing some spice. I can't see his his uh, his energy right now. His hand is in the way. But oh man, this guy's playing. The gas right now. It's uh, it's looking very interesting. Tricolor Beerus, that's pretty dope. I've seen with I've seen it with a splash of blue, not with a splash of green just yet. But I'm sure he's put a lot of hours into test playing it. He's paying two, not yet. So yeah, he has a green. He has a green. So it's it's he's in the out. He's out that he's playing this, and he topos the attack. So now his turn is completely turned off. He's not going to be doing anything this turn. I don't know if. Well, I mean, yeah, because if he would have played Kaioken next turn, then he, he would have been. He would have got hit by it either way. He could have just uh, ripped the topo out of his hand. So I guess it was smart that he. Oh, there's the Kaioken. We know now. I guess it was smart that he did that. Although if he floods the board with two Kaiokens and goes to one life, and he has two on board, both of them gain dual attack and triple strike and are unkillable. So I don't know. Maybe that's the move. Play two or three of them and just go to one life on that turn and swing a roo. So he's nuking that card. Bye bye. Still under topo here, so it's kind of uh, kind of a turn turn killer here. His turn is probably turned off, to be fair. And uh, I'm, it's safe to assume Joshua is playing topo. Uh, any any deck that plays red plays Topo because it's arguably the best card in the game right now, just because it turns off turns straight up. Um, so does Nimbus, but Nimbus is a lot more situ is a lot more situational than Topo. Is Topo is just all around great because you get a twenty k beater out of it uh, for the swing back on the next turn. So all around things better. The good thing for Dalon here is that he did manage to keep his Beerus leader unawakened with that Topo, so he he had planned it all the way through. Obviously, he's uh, had a lot of time to test play and plays a lot, so it's very very good to see he's playing at such a high level um, his stuff is gonna untap he still has yet to untap his leader and his battle card there but not a big deal I'm sure he'll do it now there you go and uh, we'll see what where it goes I assume he's gonna awaken this turn I don't think he needs to be any greedier than he already has been unless he has like a topo in hand another topo in hand or something but I very much doubt it um, I'm excited to see him play that Broly. There's the Champa. So we know he plays the Champa. So hopefully he has another one in hand because when he does play that uh, that Clash Coup next turn, or not the Clash Coup, but the Kaioken Goku next turn, it's going to be 
very very good to uh to be able to just chop us say no your turn's over now he's putting a lot of pressure on as well he's gonna swing with 19. if i was joshua i don't know if i would have taken that one i think i would have struggled a little bit to because now he's going to combo and push really hard. And um, Daylon's very smart. He obviously has a lot of experience with the uh, Vegeta the Cruel matchup because he's making sure to play all his battle cards on his opponent's turn, or rather that's just how it's uh, turned out so far. He's only played battle cards when it's in his opponent's turn, so Vegeta the Cruel cannot activate uh, if it's uh, your turn. And because Daylon is playing it during his opponent's turn, his opponent can't activate it. And that way he's slowly flooding his board with just reversal cards, basically. And there's the green super combo. I haven't seen that super combo in a long time. Well, <laughs> a little bit short here. Only being a 10k unless he awakens. But if he awakens, then it's a little bit too risky. Because if he does play the, the, the Kaioken next turn, he'll be completely tapped out. And that's kind of rough. Slow and steady wins the pace in this matchup, I'd say. When it's uh, red, red, green against red, green, apparently. It's uh, it's all about taking your time and not making any mistakes. If, if you see... Uh, all right, so this is very curious. He's not playing any battle cards on his own turn. Still scared of that Vegeta the Cruel. But now it seems like he's going to be arriving. And for the Gogeta, there it is. So here's the Gogeta. Let's see if Daylon has any kind of response to that. Thinking he could, um, what's it called? Topo. What just happened? There it is. Okay, sorry. All right, perfect. He had the Topo in hand, but he put it back down. So he's going to Denial of Hope. Uh, yeah, Topo's tap, perfect. So he's going to Denial of Hope, the um, Gogeta, which stops him from going into play because it is a 20k. But they hadn't finished the combo off yet, and I think he dumped the Raditz in the drop here, and that's what they're talking about right now. Put the Raditz back in your zone. Look, you're still attacking. Yeah, there you go. See? Very important, guys. Whenever you're playing a game, please make sure to put the cards in the proper zone, make sure that they're, there's no confusion because that's how it happens. And now you're at 15 onto 15 or 15 on, I believe the Topo was swinging or was it the Vegeta? No, it was the Topo, the Topo was swinging. So the Denial can go to the drop area, that's resolved. Whenever he does, I don't think it's, there's gonna be any confusion with it, there it is. And now he's just working to get over the combo. If he has another Vegeta or Gogeta, he could arrival that and pop it, but I very much doubt he does. He's instead comboing away another Raditz. Oh, what a wait, he doesn't have to do that. Why did he feel like he needed to do that? That's so weird. Maybe it's just what just happened? Why'd he do that? He comboed another That's very interesting. So he comboed another Raditz for some reason when he could have still arrived that Gogeta without having that to combo the Raditz. So he kind of just negged one from his hand for no reason. Could just have been the nerves that got to him there, but or maybe there's some maybe there's something bigger he's going for. Maybe he counted the cards in his drop area. Oh baby. There you go. So he does it again. Daylon nukes his board and now the awaken. You thought he was tapped out, but he's not. And he swings nineteen. So I'm not sure if if Daylon is actually in as great as a position as he s thinks, just because if he doesn't have that chomp, he has the chomp. Never mind, we're good. We're a Gucci. I saw his hand and we're chilling. So if uh, Joshua does make the mistake and plays the um, the Kaioken this turn, it could be game ending, I believe, because having two 19Ks plus your leader and Beerus is just gonna say tap two, kill your Goku. So I don't know. He could play another one on the next turn, but I think with the pressure that Daylon's gonna put on. Especially with him being tapped out, maybe at two mana or two uh, energy, just because he's gonna awaken as well. I don't know. We'll see. I think you just, if you don't have an alternate play, you just shotgun it. Who knows? He 
counting though. He's counting. Yeah. Does he have it? He might. I don't think he does. Uh, he might. His deck is pretty thin. If anything, he can still attack with his leader mill too, and he'll have it for sure. So I don't think uh, whether or not he has it, it's too stressful. But Kashku's Kashku always adds like uh, always has a huge hand as well. It's like one of the best things about him is that the Haruda Garden draw, the Haruda Garden esque type draw is insane. Uh, well, we'll see. Three life to four. It's just taking a little bit of time. He's thinking. Is he going to shotgun it? And he does not. That's not that card. That's not the card we thought he was going to play. So Dylan's going to read that card. Let's see if I can look that card up here. Um, I believe it's this one. It is. It is. Kaioken Son Goku, Defender of Earth. And we will look it up here. So basically what this card does is, if there are 20 more cards, say, uh, reduce the cost by 2, same as the other Kaioken. And then when your life reaches 1 for the duration of the turn, this card gains triple strike, dual attack, can be covered by opponent's deals. Huh. Oh wait, it is. It's just the alternative art. I'm just bad at the game. Okay, sick. Alright, nice. All right, boys, we're dumb. It's just an alternative art that I've never seen before in my life. I was so shooketh. I thought it was a, I thought it was an SPR. It is an SPR. Sorry, I'm just so used to the uh, event pack promo that I've literally never seen the SPR. That's toxic. But uh, yeah, so he played it and it got chomped. Perfect, as you say, as you say. And he's swinging with his leader and using the feet. Good old feet, Kamehameha. And I don't know if using feet, Kamehameha, on offense is the best thing because he could just take it and kill him next turn but you know what, it's not bad he doesn't want to take the crit so he's going to lose cards in his hand so technically it was worth it just because now he's four cards he just traded four cards for one which is insane value but his turn is over and unless that one that one uh energy he has up is going to be life-saving i think he's dead beers is just going to say tap two kill your uh kaioken <coughs> I think you just should do that at the beginning. The very first thing you should do is just get that out of the way. Just so that he doesn't accidentally bring him to one life and make it so that the Kaioken Goku can't be killed. Because it goes both ways. You can do that on your opponent's turn. And besides, even if he's at one life, having him be like a... Oh, why is he doing that? Just use your Beerus ability, man. Or does Beerus say... No, it just says KO card, I think. At most, I think he was fine even if he... I don't know, he's probably dead if he didn't Champa, but... Um, unless... If he had like a few negates some combo power, he would maybe okay. But the Champa is definitely what made him win. Oh, he played the baby. Oh no, what a disaster. He plays the baby. He's planning to uh, use the ability. Oof, this is rough. Discards three cards, and he has the foo, so he showed that for game two. So, very possible that uh, gets rid of him. Minus 20k. So, that's what he was planning. He minus 20k with the Weast, and minus 20k his board with the. So, he mm, saved mana. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Then gets to play him. And now this game is starting to look pretty unwinnable. Oh, well, there you go. To your minus five, he swung 15. Now he's going into 19, and unless uh, red or green have uh, Nimbus, I think this match is just about wrapped up. I'm going to go into game two, where the kid, the classical player will start, and hopefully things could be a bit different. Go up to 29, very hard, very difficult to beat. Takes it, and he's just going to swing with the Vegeta most likely. Power burst. Killing the ch nope can't kill anything, unfortunate. Swings with a 19k, cause why not? 19, bigger than 15, confirmed. And he's gonna go all in. 29, 39, 44, and might as well combo the Champa and the, the the SS3 Goku, but there's no point, I guess. 
39. He's actually not that high up. He, this could actually... Need, oh, no. Never mind. He's minus 20. Well, he's at minus 5k. No, this game. This this deck does have a lot of super combos, though. But he did mill a bunch of them out at the beginning with his Kashuk ability. So, yeah. That's going to wrap it up. And they're going to go into game two? Question mark? Why is, he, why is his hand out? Just scoop it up if you put your hand out already. Yeah, there you go. All right, sick. There we go. And out, and that's the first one for Daylon. Um, this matchup's interesting. I think I think it can go either way. If Daylon doesn't hold the Champa, um, then he's just definitely dead, because being able to see in your opponent's hands just insane. Um, but oppose like. I would have maybe maybe consider taking a life because he was probably dead no matter what. But I would have maybe consider taking a life with the clash, uh, with the uh, the Kaioken Goku, just because I could see my opponent's hand and discard something. So he could have maybe discarded that baby, and with the gas he actually had in his hand, it was good. It was a good amount of stuff. Granted, uh, Daylon wouldn't have discarded three cards for the baby effect, so it's just it's just very hard. I don't think there's much that he could have done very different to uh, save time and scoop. Yikes, toxic. Um, I don't think there's much that he could have done. But, uh, but yeah, Sparking the Gates would actually help a lot for this match. He probably is going to side in after Image. After Image is invaluable in the matchup. Um, still probably top three best negates in the game. Nothing has changed. It's insane. The fact that it's Sparking makes it crazy. Um, and the fact that Red is so strong right now makes it crazy. But, yep, alas, it's unfortunate. And now we're going to jump back, hopefully, there we go. Now we're going to jump back into it. They're going into game two. Uh, I believe they've actually sided in already. That was a quick side in. Um, I'm not sure what you side in in this matchup if you're if you're Daylon. You probably just match up, uh, you probably just keep your deck as is, just because the matchup's already kind of in your favor. Um, it's more so, it's more so on Joshua to side in something crafty to be able to, uh, to sneak to sneak some wins or just like put Daylon in a bad position. Um, if you hurt Beerus's hand and force him to awaken, it's impossible for him to build it back up. Um, besides using like, his offering cards, um, but as we saw in the last game, Joshua had a good amount of life even late, so it's not the end of the world um, if he does play some offering cards because potentially he could get them. Uh, he could just create a life away and make him not draw two, and that's probably his whole turn because there's no way he's playing more than one offering card a turn. Well, either way. I think uh I think it's just a question of seeing the Clash Coup player uh be a little bit more crafty and and kill and kill him. That's the move I guess. He he did what exactly what the D Dalen expected though. As then that's that's the number one thing about this game is that if you can plan out and you know what your opponent's gonna do, it's very, very rare that you'll lose. And that's just what it is. You know what your opponent like and with a deck as uh transparent as Clash Coup is it's just it's just very difficult because Clash Coup is very very simply countered. You just know what he's gonna do. If you spent the first three turns setting up for it, nothing's going to happen to you. So you're just cruising. Uh, life set up. Of course, Joshua gets to go first this time. So let's see how that goes. He's probably gonna charge a multicolor pass. He can't swing with his leader, so it's not the end of the world. He just gets to his. Uh, Clash go a bit faster. His uh, Kaioken a bit faster. So discard the Whis. The Whis is insanely valuable in every matchup. Actually, five minus five k is just insane. Like we saw last game, he minus five k to the twenty five uh, to his twenty five k uh, Kaioken Goku, and he still uh, after minusing twenty k five k, he minus the twenty with the baby, managed to kill it, so he didn't have to tap two with his Beerus leader, and instead he just went for game with it. So he managed to spam board and make an insane uh, let, like wide attack turn and also clear his opponent's board. So it's pretty insane. Pretty insane what this deck can do if you let it go off, if you give it the time to get to like turn five, at four life and a good amount of cards in hand, there's very little any deck can do against it, m except for maybe like blue-green, maybe blue-green, if they play like, uh, what's it called? If they play the eight drop 21, nuke their board, and that's if they didn't charge a bunch of uh, multicolor energy. Yes, this is George the Canadian. Hello. <laughs> it's 
okay that that's my nickname. I'm cool with it. That's a dope name. Just hanging out here. Twitch chat. How are y'all doing? Linear deck. If you can play around Kaoken, you tend to be fine. Yep, absolutely, man. It's. I think. I think if you if you choose to play Clash Q in like a tournament, you're kind of admitting. You're just kind of just saying, okay, if I if I get the top tables, I'm probably gonna lose, just because those decks can do it doesn't mean you're like a worse player than the other the player, player you're playing against but if you're playing clash coup it's to play against a deck that doesn't have an answer to clash coup which are there are a few but not many every every color pretty much has an answer um you can catch Jemen janemba lacking a couple times you could but like you're you probably don't get to use your auto as much you don't get to fill up your hand like the ma janemba matchup is probably a terrible one not that many people are playing janemba to begin with but there are a few your kid coup matchup is okay but if they banish or foo you and have a board you're just dead and you can't vegeta the, or you can uh, you can vegeta the cruel a good amount of their cards but it gets a little bit difficult you side in like the mock speed on goku to kill their kid coups and minus 10k to something else there's there's options every deck has an answer to you um but like uh who said this here like um a lucard 1357 said Clash Coup is a very linear deck. If you can play around Kaioken, you tend to be fine. It's just the truth. Being able to see your opponent's hand and discard cards isn't as good since all the uh, since all the counterplays came out. Specifically, Champa. Like if you just via Champa, you're just you're just dead. <laughs> like you're just dead the next turn on the swim back because typically you're tapped out. Like Daylon didn't even know like pressure him that much to force the awaken. Um, but now going second, he is going to be a, put on a little bit more pressure. If Joshua does play something. Um, next turn, it's probably going to get nuked, and Daylon's going to get a uh, a threat on board. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see here. But now it's five life to six life, not seven. Sorry about that. Five life to six life, and it's just taking some time here. It's a little bit slow. I'm sure the the uh, I'm sure Josh was thinking real hard about what he can do. To try to help. I don't know if he saw what he sided out, what he sided in. There probably there, there hadn't been. I don't think there's been very much. Uh, I don't think they sided out on very many cards to be honest. It was more so just like one or two cards, even at that. I don't know what you would as a Beerus player. I don't know what you would side into this matchup just because your Champa is the answer and he doesn't do anything to you before that. And like I, they Daylon had no issue dealing with him the first game so we'll see if he can pull out a win that'd be amazing i'd love to see it because i know it's going to be like it's going to be freaking spectacular if he manages to pull out a win focus breakthrough yep if you focus breakthrough the champa you're good um that's that's the only out i suppose This card. I'm very curious. I want. I haven't, we haven't seen him play the Broly yet. Crusher Ball. Oh no! What a disaster. He plays the Crusher Ball. He said, but the Crusher Ball is not good against the the five the seven drop. The seven drop has deflect, so Crusher Ball can't hit it. I wonder what he's trying to Crusher Ball with that, or why he didn't side it out. Maybe he just saw no reason to side it out. But he's forced himself to awaken. So I don't know if he's gonna try to play a threat this turn, or if he's just putting himself there because he has like a Topo in hand and he just doesn't want any attacks to go through next turn. Because next turn is the kill turn. But if Clash Coup does his thing, he's gonna be able to rip four cards out of his hand. Have two. Yeah, it's like just game. If if he passes here, it's probably game, unless he has a Champa. But if he doesn't, then I don't know. He's gonna swing with his leader. He's gonna put him in the range to awaken. Dangerous. It is one less card, so technically it's the correct play. So if he takes this hit, then he's gonna go down to. He probably. Oh, he's gonna awaken. Oh, is he gonna wait? Oh, he's gonna arrival with the Beerus and force his leader not to untap. Amazing, perfect. So that's a very big brain play by Delon right there. He, Delon, sorry. He uh, he taps his opponent's player and keeps it tapped for his next turn. So now um, Joshua cannot fuel his gra graveyard with his leader, and he cannot uh, attack with his leader. So it's going. It's basically just better than Topo at this point because it buys him an extra turn for free. It doesn't matter that he has uh, five energy. Um, he doesn't have the cards in drop area to bring out the uh, Kaioken Goku.
Fierce is this format Skillless Kitku. I think Skillless Kitku is this format Skillless Kitku can't bear it. Like uh it's still a very relevant deck. I don't I don't think it's below tier two. The deck is just good. Uh with uh, the proper uh with the proper pilot I think it's very hard to beat, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think he has to go for the the clash coup play on turn. Uh, what's it called? Either on turn six, unawakened, or just on turn six to to be able to play the focus breakthrough on the on the Champa, or he has to be at four life, play it on turn five, and um, yeah. So I don't know why he didn't do that. Probably because he's not enough in, in grave, but, or just uh, take a life with it because you can't take a life with focus breakthrough if you're at four or less. Um, so that's probably just the the play. Although taking a life means that you don't get that extra card. So I think playing it on turn six is probably the correct play. Um, it's just a question of surviving Daylon's next turn. He could just say pass right now, and play very very defensively. But then again, that's kind of rough because Daylon probably has a counter play. I don't know how much energy he has up. I can't see. Oh, but he plays the blocker. That's decent. Gets to draw some cards. And he's probably just going to pass right here. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that Krillin's a brawl, a blocker. Discard one. Still kind of fueling. Short of uh, Daylon playing another another Beerus and keeping his uh, his opponent's uh, Joshua's Clash Q tapped, I think this should be... He's just still in a very, very good position. Like uh, Daylon is. Daylon is. Let's see what happens here. Hey, shout out Floodgate13. Uh, I said it. Floodgate, uh, I said it. Kiku still Kiku. Beerus is just, I think Beerus is its own, is its own thing. It's very counter. It's like, it's just better than Bulma because, it, I don't know, it's weird. Like, I feel like Beerus is what people thought Bulma would be, but because having a f an awakened side of 5k and an awakened side of 10 is just so, so oppressing, the draw two is like not as good. You draw enough on the Beerus is on awakened side, to net enough advantage to be able to pop off when you're on uh, when you're awakened. Because Beerus drew one when he attacked, he'd be probably like tier one. He'd be so insane. Just that would that would change that would make the ultimate difference. Alright, so two energy up. Let's see what uh Daylon can do. I'm not too sure. He's got a blocker on board and he <coughs> he might make it so that if that blocker dies he gets to play the big Goku. So Daylon has to sequence his attacks very, very well here. Otherwise, he's in some trouble, and he gives that uh, Kaioken Goku a whole other turn. Gret and like, don't forget, Klashku still has a lot of life. He's at five life. That means potentially four cards ripped away from uh, Dalen's hand. So uh, Dalen's hand. So this is very, very, very winnable for the Klashku player. I think if he's going to win one. It's definitely going to be this one. Uh, everything is basically came to come to that. If he can just somehow find a way to end his turn, I'm trying to think for him. <laughs> Probably. Oh, oh, he's just gonna straight up do it. All right, sick. Nukes everything. Uh, does he have anything in hand in response? He does not. Maybe he does. He does not, unfortunately. I'm right, gonna swing at the leader. No combos. Probably just either take it or combo 5k. Yep, and he gets to draw one. That is very, very true. That is a good card. I think that's the correct line of play because you don't want to take the chump damage. You want to take the big hits that you don't want to combo that you cannot combo. So you definitely just do that. Oh, he's really thinking about it. Yeah, just do that. Did he draw? He didn't draw. Am I missing something? Oh, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you have to have two multicolor energy and drop uh, in uh, in chart in your zone. I guess he hasn't seen any of the Brolies yet. That's yeah. He doesn't have any Brolies in energy. That's crazy. You have to have two, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Kiku needs to abuse its its way to put cards in the draw. Pop out its overall every turn. Uh, I don't think so, Pokemon Ranger. Like uh, Kitku needs to abuse it, abuse its way to put cards. I don't think Kitku like the what Kitku's I've seen the the yellow variant in my opinion is the best one, and that one only plays like a banish like Dark Banisher Fu and Demigra. 
and that's it. You don't spam out uh, spam out overwhelm cards. You try to banish your fool on like turn four if you have the opening for it. Um, if your opponent doesn't have like a window for chomp or throw pull or something, then you do it for sure. But short of that, I don't know, man. I don't think uh, I don't think you spam overwhelm with Kiku. It's not probably not the move. But Kitku does have a very impossible matchup against Hachiak. It's tough because Kitku is the definition of going wide, almost as much so as like um, Universe Six. <laughs> I'm a Universe Six combo player, man. I played that deck for a while, and and like Hachiak came out, and I think I'm like, one win and like seven losses to that deck. It's just so impossible to win. The one win I stole off of like nonsense too. That's the worst part. It was just he bricked, I think. I don't know, and I just kept going at him. You can't establish a board like crit away all his life and stuff, but it just gets difficult. He's counting it. If I'm not mistaken, he has 14 cards in his drop. Soon to be 16 with his leader attack, and then 17 with his leader attack, because he discards something. So he's going to have 17, so he's going to be 3 short. So that just goes to show how huge that Beerus was, because that would have put him at exactly 20 if he hadn't Beerus uh, last, last turn. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Let's see what he does. At this point, he's getting to the point where he can almost play for seven men. <laughs> and Beerus still does not want to awaken. Of course not. because He doesn't awaken and he doesn't want to go to three. Because that's kill range. Can Joshua afford to pass? I mean, I haven't seen the topo from Joshua yet. So, um, oh, he did. He didn't. It got denied. That's not true. But I think that's worth it, to be honest. Oh, he's just doing it. Wait. Oh, he had enough. I miscounted. Okay, he had 21. Never mind. Okay, So he had 21. He's going to chomp it and he's going to focus breakthrough. Oh, you have to be at four life. Oh, what a disaster. He overshot. Oh, Daylon was waiting for it, too. Oh, what a disaster. He forgot. He should have just taken that hit from Beerus and gone down to four. The game would be over. I think he really... Uh, it's like that meme of the guy riding the bicycle and putting a, a stick in the bicycle, in the in the tire, then blaming somebody else. He just did it to himself, man. Oh, what a disaster. Champa draws him a card. Nets advantage, and... If he says pass turn now, he's 100% dead next turn. There's probably not much else he could do. And even at that, like, yeah, he's just definitely dead, I think. Daylon isn't in the, the best, in, like, the craziest position. He's in a very, very, very good one, though. Nothing is unwinnable, all right, guys? Never forget that. Nothing is unwinnable. Especially when you're playing Dragon Ball. play go we did fix the banner on the side there the cards are a little bit bigger we shrunk it a little bit hopefully it's better for you guys now he's gonna draw two with his beerus pop it he's probably gonna do the exact same thing he did last turn what a disaster oh no so yeah this is the literally Move for move, the exact same thing he did last turn. Is he considering not killing him? What the heck? What's happening right now? He knows he has the breakthrough. And he knows he plays the Gohan. So this is kind of risky if Daylon's not going for game right now. Hmm. I don't know if this is the correct line of play. I'm really not sure. Because now this game is still very, very winnable for... Uh, I think he has to tap for that. No? Maybe he did. No waken, untap two. Big yikes. And there's the life. Now he's at four. Your focus breakthrough is, is, is online now, sir. It's very interesting that he chose to attack the Kaioken if he's now putting pressure on the leader. I feel like he should have just attacked the leader. And the Kaioken was dying anyways. Like, I don't know why he didn't just swing with Beerus onto the leader. It's kind of strange, to be honest. Man, misplays on both parts. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he was thinking of something I didn't see, but... Uh, See what happens here, and he goes down to three. This is kind of rough, guys. If I were him, I probably would have awakened, just because I know my opponent has the gas to kill me. I don't know what's in his hand, but it might, because it, he might just have super combo central in his hand. 
but I don't think that that's the case, to be honest. Still getting a 20k attack, a 25k attack, and this 15k attack, and a 19k attack. So now he's going to super combo up to make sure that he hits uh, with these ones, for sure. Because he wants the bigger ones to just swing. Oh, he has a chomp in hand. Oh, no. I saw the chomp in his hand. So if he swings the Beerus now and he says no negates, this is going to be pretty bad. So, minus 3. Why is it minus 3? He should be at minus 5k. He's at minus 5k. Minus 5 to his 25. That puts him at 0. So he needs 30,000 more. Holy... Oh, such a disaster. He's going to arrival kill it. Okay, that's good. Whew. I was shook, bruh. I was shooketh. Now he has uh, the threat on board. Granted, it's not going to make much of a difference. So now he probably just does it again where he goes up to maybe 30, 29 since it's Vegeta. I think 29 is a fine number. He's going to combo. Yep, that's, that's that's one of the first times we've seen him do him in the past couple games. He's been reluctant to do it for some reason. Well, last turn he just killed. And he arrivals the Beerus and kills the... Oh, what a disaster. So that's potential combo power. Because um, Joshua's hand isn't huge. So right now, and it's another threat. So this is just kind of rough all the way through. Oh, this is rough. That, that misplay is just what's costing him the game right now. The, this would, this game would have already been over, I believe, if uh, if if Joshua didn't misplay really hard there. But you know that's a part of the game. It's round three, you're on stream, you got to be nervous. Um, it's just it's just how it is. I can attest. I've been on stream before, and it's it's very nerve wracking. You uh, you're thinking about too many things at once, typically. But there you go, he out comboed. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to matter too too much. Gonna swing here, 25k. He can comfortably say no combos, and he's just gonna take it. He's just struggling. Attack with the beers. Uh, are they both 25? Maybe. And he just swings here for game, and drops the champa. Granted, if he out combos this, it could be pretty good, but I don't think it's going to. So, 20, 30. He's so giving a 30k boost, and that's game. They shake hands, and they're on their way. All right, guys. Well, it was a good one. It was interesting to watch. Another 2-0. I think they've all been 2-0 so far. Well, 17 minutes left in the round. Um, we're going to grab uh, Daylon to interview for sure because uh, I want to, being like a beers player, I want to see what he thinks about the deck. And uh, I'm definitely going to ask him about the, those yellow Brolies. I know they do a lot of good stuff. They tap uh, uh, energy. They do a lot of sweet things. Um, unfortunate Clash Crew couldn't steal one, but, uh, but yeah, we'll be right back. We're going to interview Daylon, uh, so stick around. Alrighty, guys, we are back with round three winner, Daylon Mac. Tell us a little bit about, uh, what you were thinking about when playing that game there. Uh, well, originally, um, I just played a Clash Crew, Clash Crew, uh, player the round before, so. Oh, wow. Lucky. The match yeah, the matchup was really hard, actually. Um. But uh, I was I was glad that I played him because it helped me learn the matchup. Do you think um, you misplayed at all in that match that you just played? Uh, no, I kind of think my opponent misplayed a little mm -hmm. bit because um, I know he wanted to do the focus fake through right there in that play. I he think that was game defining. Yeah. yeah, he was in a really good spot to just kill you. I think if he would have taken that damage and gone down to four, it would have been a potential game three. Yeah. But uh, but and yeah. I, and I was trying to hold on to uh, a lot of my negates. Mm -hmm. That way I could have a chance yeah. to, you know, it, it, like exactly. if, if he can't rip all my negates, then I can still win. Exactly. If you just have to stop one of the attacks, if you're at four life, so you're chilling, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, are there any matchups you're really worried about? No, I think my deck's pretty well-rounded. I think the one I would be worried about would be that one. Um, really? Yeah, that's a really good deck. I wish I would have experimented a little bit more with it before the tournament started. Yeah. Um, I know my friend uh, Nick Martinez plays it. Yeah, and he was telling me about it, but um, it's definitely a. a it's deck very to worry linear. About. That's uh, everyone was saying in the chat, and I was saying myself, like it's very linear. Like there's one thing it does, and mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything else. Yeah. Um, so if you can stop that one thing it does, you win, which you did a good job in doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I'm curious about those uh, green yellow Brolies you play in your in your deck. What's up with that? Uh, yeah, this is just uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to play uh splash green because I feel like Vegeta the Cruel is just such a good card. You're right. Um, it was really for Hatch because they don't normally have a hand and it just helps like take care of their blockers and stuff mm. like that. 
But um, it's kind of people are kind of learning how to play. You know, kind of doing it on my turn. So if my counter plays really don't work because yeah. if they summon a guy on my turn, then my Vegeta the Cruel doesn't mm. his auto doesn't kick off. Yeah, something you were doing a really good job was just playing battle cards on his own turn, so he couldn't Vegeta the Cruel you. Yeah. Yeah, because he had them in hand and stuff. So, but you just played really well around that. Yeah. But uh. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to interview. Thank you for being on stream. We all had a great time watching you, and you. Uh, good luck in your next games, man. Thank you. Take care.